During World War II, soldiers often faced conditions where access to clean water was scarce or, well, sometimes just impossible. Rivers could be contaminated with debris, mud or disease, and rationed water supplies sometimes ran out in remote or active combat zones. Yet field manuals and veteran accounts reveal a little-known method that allowed soldiers to turn muddy brackish water into something safe to drink. Unlike modern filtration systems, this method relied on simple available materials – sand, cloth, charcoal and time-tested layering techniques – to remove impurities and pathogens. For backyard survivalists, preppers and history enthusiasts, this forgotten technique isn't just an interesting anecdote. It's a practical skill that can be applied today when clean water is limited or emergency situations arise. The core principle of the World War II water method relied on staged filtration. Soldiers learned that water could be purified step by step starting with the removal of large sediment and progressing to finer particles. First, muddy water was allowed to settle in a container. Sediment, clay and debris sank to the bottom, leaving slightly clearer water at the top. This basic principle, sedimentation, was the first stage of purification. Next, the water was passed through layers of cloth, or fine mesh to catch remaining particles. Finally, activated charcoal, sometimes made by burning wood and crushing it into fine powder, was used to adsorb impurities, odors and some bacteria. Each step amplified the effectiveness of the previous one, creating water that was safe enough to boil or consume in survival conditions. Today, the same method can be applied using household materials. A clean container, layers of cotton or muslin, sand and charcoal can create a filtration system remarkably similar to what soldiers improvised in the field. The selection and preparation of materials made a huge difference. World War II soldiers didn't have access to sophisticated chemical treatments, so choosing the right sand, cloth and charcoal was critical. Coarse sand was placed on top to trap larger particles, while finer sand layers removed smaller sediment. Cloth needed to be clean, tightly woven and folded in multiple layers to catch debris without allowing it to pass through. Charcoal had to be fully cooled, crushed and rinsed to remove ash. Historical manuals stress that skipping these steps reduce the effectiveness of the filter, leaving water unsafe or, honestly, just unpleasant to drink. Modern practitioners can replicate this by thoroughly cleaning cloth layers and rinsing charcoal before use ensuring the filtration system works effectively in emergencies. The method emphasized slow filtration to maximize purity. Soldiers were taught patience. Pouring water too quickly through the layers reduced contact time with charcoal and cloth, allowing impurities to pass through. Letting water drip slowly ensured maximum absorption, and sediment capture. This principle is still critical today. By creating a gravity-fed setup where water slowly percolates through sand, cloth and charcoal, backyard enthusiasts can produce clearer water without pumps or electricity. Even simple adjustments, folding the cloth thicker, adding more sand layers or crushing charcoal finer, improve results, demonstrating the adaptability of this World War II technique. Boiling or heating was an essential final step for safety. While the stage filtration removed most visible particles and some pathogens, soldiers were trained to boil filtered water whenever possible. 
This final step ensured microbiological safety and is still the most reliable method to eliminate bacteria and viruses. In modern backyard or survival contexts, using this method followed by boiling creates a safe water supply from otherwise undrinkable sources, making it invaluable during emergencies, camping trips or unexpected supply shortages. The method also allowed for rapid improvisation in the field. One of the reasons this World War II technique endured is that it required minimal specialized equipment. Soldiers could fashion a filter using empty cans, fabric from clothing, sand from riverbeds, and charcoal from fires. Even in the absence of commercial filters, the principle remained the same. Layered filtration, slow percolation, and final sterilization. Backyard enthusiasts can replicate this using jars, plastic bottles, or buckets, demonstrating that historical field craft is surprisingly applicable today. This improvisational aspect highlights a key survival lesson. Understanding core principles allows solutions to be created from almost any available material. The effectiveness of this method teaches an enduring lesson about resourcefulness. Modern water filters rely on complex membranes and chemical treatments, but the World War II method proves that understanding natural filtration and material properties can be just as effective. Soldiers didn't rely on convenience. They relied on observation, layering, and careful preparation. For anyone practicing emergency preparedness, camping or homesteading, this lesson reinforces the importance of knowledge and skill over reliance on manufactured solutions. Practical application can start in your backyard today. Gather a clean container, layers of cotton or muslin, coarse and fine sand, and crushed charcoal. Start by allowing muddy water to settle then pour it slowly through the layered materials. Collect the filtered water in a clean vessel and finally boil or heat it for safety. Experiment with layering thickness, drip speed and charcoal preparation to see how each variable affects clarity and taste. This hands-on approach not only recreates a World War II technique, but also teaches fundamental survival skills that remain relevant in any situation where clean water is scarce. If you want more forgotten survival methods, historical fieldcraft, and practical backyard experiments inspired by history, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video. These World War II water techniques aren't just history, they are life-saving knowledge that can be applied today.